Hello, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz, and I've got another interesting climate update around Australia. This is about the Southern Annular Mode, or SAM, and it's a major player in the weather scene, especially across southwestern and southeastern Australia. It's what drives rainfall, cold front activity, and high pressure systems around southeastern and southwestern Australia, especially at this time of the year. Now, recently, we have had a sudden stratospheric warming event, which throws everything into uh, basically haywire and overdrive, especially up into the polar vortex, and that has some major major ramifications on how the southern annular mode behaves around Australia. If you do end up enjoying this update and forecast, and please do let me know in the comment section down below and subscribe to the channel as well while you're at it. But let's just get stuck straight into things. So what you're looking at right now is a map showcasing the winds around the jet stream. It all looks rather normal apart from, uh, I guess, uh, a weakened jet flow across northern Australia. But though all in all, it is a relatively normal picture, even though we have just had a southern strat uh, stratospheric warming event, which is where the air air high above Antarctica warms dramatically in a very short period of time. They're exceedingly rare with only three of them occurring in the past 25 years. Back in 2002, 2019 leading to one of the worst bushfire seasons on record and again this year. Now it really throws the weather scene out around Australia but it, it also imp it impacts a major climate driver which is the southern annual annular mode. Now the southern annular mode is a uh, climate driver that's influenced by the uh, difference in high pressure and low pressure or just pressure in general through northern Australia and then for the waters south of Australia. In um, in its actuality, it's a comparison between the pressure. It, it's an arbitrary indexed comparison between that pressure throughout northern Australia and then into southern Australia. So when we have a positive southern annular mode, especially in our winter months, we see these uh, cold fronts get pushed away and dragged further down towards Antarctica. And when we have a negative southern annular mode, we get that rainfall pulled further up towards Australia. And that flips on its head in terms of what rainfall we expect as we get into our, our spring and our summer months, especially after December, generally speaking, the positive southern annular mode then impacts in the way of higher rainfall accumulations throughout southeastern Australia and especially through eastern Australia. All complicated stuff. Now, this is a historical map of the southern annular mode, and you can see from the Bureau of Meteorology, at least over the past five years, there really isn't that much um, change in the southern annular mode. There's been no trend over the past five years. In La Nina years, it generally does bias towards a negative, just overall speaking, but it's a very, very weak bias. And and you can see it bounces up and down quite substantially over the course of about two weeks to four weeks at a time we generally work on a cyclical basis between that two to four week period. Now, currently our southern annular mode is swinging towards that negative, which is influenced by that uh, southern stratospheric warming event. When we do have those SSW events, the southern annular mode gets a massive negative bias, and that's reflected in some of the ensemble forecasts, which suggests the southern annular mode to remain generally negative throughout the remainder of October. You can see there's a massive split here, but this line of best fit here, the forecast ensemble mean, is generally the best line to follow, at least for about a week into into the future. And you can see whilst that does get back to about baseline in the way of the southern annular mode, we are just expecting that general negative trend to continue for at least the next month or so. And that's very heavily influenced by this SSW, the Southern Stratospheric Warming Event that we have witnessed. Now, what does this mean for Southeastern Australia? We're in this change of a period right now, which means everything's been thrown into haywire and it's kind of the worst time of the year to have the forecast thrown into complete haywire, but it has had some pretty significant ramifications. Now, it, around this time of the year, when we do see the southern annular mode dragged into that negative phase. We do get these cold fronts riding up a little bit further north than usual, but it really suppresses moisture through eastern Australia, which is why the thunderstorm outbreaks that have occurred over in southeastern Queensland and throughout New South Wales have, generally speaking, on a much broader uh, spectrum, really busted. And I've also found a really good example of this is we see low pressure dragged further down into the Coral Sea, and you can actually see a bit of a weak low pressure system in the Coral Sea right now, and that's being dragged a lot further south considering the time of the year because of this negative southern annular mode phase that we are in. So you can see this speckled cloud activity moving in towards South Australia, Victoria and Tasmania. The rainfall is expected to continue for those areas through South Australia, Victoria and Tasmania. But compared to what we would normally see for stronger winter cold fronts that come through around this time of the year, uh, these cold fronts are substantially weaker and they're just more kind of housed with drizzly rainfall as opposed to heavier rainfall that we are more familiar with when cold fronts do come through. So it's kind of that pesky, miserable, drizzly weather that's coming through at this point in time. 
But if we have a look at rainfall accumulations on the longer range forecast, whilst we're in this negative southern annular mode, rainfall is going to continue strong for the southwest of WA, and it's also going to continue strong for the west coast of Tasmania. That's very typical for this time of the year for a negative southern annular mode. But apart from that, rainfall is going to be hit and miss for South Australia. Victoria expecting some pretty decent falls here and there for the most part, especially through the Victorian Alps coming through this weekend on the 4th and the 5th of October, respectively, and some half decent rainfall accumulations in parts of New South Wales as well. But overall, the picture throughout New South Wales and especially Queensland looking very dry for this time of the year. Now, with the forecast that we were going off a few weeks ago, we were expecting a bumper storm season through New South Wales and Queensland to really get itself going around about now, but that's just not happening on the forecast modelling in the next 14 days. There's not much to talk about in the way of thunderstorm activity in the next 14 days for New South Wales or Queensland, which is unusual for this time of the year and especially unusual considering what the long range forecast modelling was suggesting uh, not too long ago. But you can also see that this is kind of balanced back out to more of a uh, medium sort of uh, weather event right now. We're, we're now back around that normality uh, kind of position throughout southeastern Australia. About a week ago when the sudden stratospheric warming event was right underway and we were really in the thick of it, it was warm and dry through southeastern Australia, very much reminiscent of what an SSW event does uh, have. But now we're kind of trending back towards that baseline and we're expected to continue trending back to that baseline in the next couple of weeks, in the next month. So this is a look at rainfall anomalies from the long range GFS forecast here over on Tropical Tidbits. Now you can see this is very much classic SSW rainfall distribution. Wet across southeastern Australia, especially through the lower southeast of South Australia and through Victoria and Tasmania, around the coastal locations there, and very dry across our eastern seaboard through New South Wales and into southeast Queensland. This is classic SSW setup here in terms of rainfall. You can also see with that uh, uh, Indian Ocean dipole in the negative phase right now. That's driving rainfall in towards the central regions of WA. Northwest cloud bands are also going to be quite prevalent in the coming couple of weeks. And you can see as that SSW event does begin to weaken off, rainfall is expected to return for New South Wales and Queensland as we get out towards weeks two and three. And you can see we get that shift back to baseline and back to normal and back to where the forecast was actually suggested to be as we get through the remainder of October and into early November. I would just like to say though that the southern annular mode it uh, is a big player through our winter months, especially for rainfall across southeastern Australia and southwestern Australia for that matter. But as we get towards our spring months, it's not as much of a heavy hitter. And especially when we're in a negative Indian Ocean dipole year, which is what we're in right now, rainfall is much more influenced from that Indian Ocean dipole around this time of the year through October and November. And as soon as that monsoonal uh, phase starts to kick in through the northwestern waters of WA, we're going to start to see that rainfall return to normal. And that's exactly what we're expecting to happen sometime in the next two weeks or so, at least with this long range prediction here between the six of October out to the 13th of October with above average rainfall expected throughout the coastal regions of New South Wales. So the worst of this SSW event is definitely in our past right now. Uh, if we compare this to 2019's SSW event, which happened in early August, it had major ramifications. It really dried off what was already a very dry winter and it created a, a very bad drought period heading into September and October and it didn't give uh, any time for rainfall to properly kick up and that was exacerbated by the positive Indian Ocean Diapole, which really hurt southeastern Australia. It prevented rainfall from getting down from tropical origins into southeastern Australia throughout the late spring months and into the early summer months. And that all culminated in one of the worst bushfire seasons on record. It's very different in 2025. We've got a negative Indian Ocean dipole, which as mentioned, does increase rainfall accumulations. And I can show you that with the monthly outlook for rainfall here throughout Australia. This is a look at October and then into November. Rainfall does really begin to pick up throughout southeastern Australia and just eastern Australia in general. And then looking at December, it's expected to be wet throughout Southeastern Australia, or throughout Eastern Australia rather, not so much for Southeastern Australia, but in this negative Indian Ocean dipole year, rainfall will return and we're not expecting anything like what we saw in 2019. So it is very different indeed. And considering this SSW event, which has a major impact on the Southern Annular Mode, which we've been talking about uh, throughout this video, uh, has happened a little bit later on when this SAM, the Southern Annular Mode, is not as of an important driver for Southeastern Australia, especially the impacts are a little bit more controlled and a little bit uh, less further reaching across southeastern Australia. So overall, it's happened at a pretty good time of the year. And whilst it definitely gave us a good shake up in the forecast and has prevented rainfall from reaching New South Wales and Queensland, to be honest, with their record-breaking run of rainfall through New South Wales, I wouldn't really consider that a bad thing. Rainfall is still continuing where it's needed through South Australia and Victoria. And whilst that's expected to ease off very shortly as we head into the summer months, it has been good while it's, uh, whilst it's lasted, albeit slightly below average. But again, they will take what they can get their hands on, especially at this time of the year. 
So overall, is this something to be overly concerned about throughout any region of Australia? Definitely not. The Southern Annular Mode is a very typical driver and it's yeah, very typical to swing wildly from positive to negative throughout Australia. And it does have some pretty major ramifications when it does so. It's what causes winter weather events to happen on what seems to be a two week cycle through Southern Australia. You know, you get two weeks or a week and a half of cold fronts nonstop, especially through the lower southwest of WA. Uh, I can, speaking from experience there, and then about a week of dry weather, that is the Southern Annular Mode working hard uh, to create that very much cyclical pattern of weather. Um, but it doesn't have such a massive impact and even less so of an impact when we're in this negative Indian Ocean dipole year, which is what we're in right now. If you've got any further questions or comments on this Southern Annular Mode, then please do let me know in the comment section down below and check out the Facebook page as well for more frequent updates on the Southern Annular Mode. But that is going to be all for me today. I do hope you've enjoyed this little update on it. Uh, the one on the SSW did exceedingly well. So thank you so much for all of the support on that. And that's why I've uh, gone to make this video here, but that's going to do it for me today. I do hope you've enjoyed it and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.